Thank you, Jose, for this introduction. Uh, thank you to the organizer for this invitation, to Jose, to Pedro, to Imbrim. Um, uh, well, as you see, the title has three key words. Uh, one is impossible objects, uh, so this is related to art. Then we have anamorphic deformation, which is a mathematical tool, and then nerves, which is a CAT standard. And um, I just wanted to integrate all those tools into something that could be useful for, for design for in arts, uh, especially. And before getting to the talk, I just want you to give you a glimpse on what, what this all is about. So, what do you think? What's going on here? Escher. Escher, right, <laughs> right. Very, yeah, you live in the Netherlands. So, <laughs> so this is called um, the uh, Penrose Stairs of Escher Stairs, and you see that um, uh, it loops up and down simultaneously, and this doesn't make any sense. So, what's the trick? What's the trick? What's the trick? Because this, this is a, I mean, behind this image, there is a 3D model, but is the 3D model you think, or what was it? So what's the trick? Nobody guesses. So it, it's quite simple. Uh, you see what's happening. So this step is bent. Yeah. So this is the trick. But the projection looks like a conventional staircase. Uh, and what about this model? What about this model? You see that, that this leg is at the right angle, right angle, right angle, but on different direction. It doesn't make any sense. So there is some contradiction. But how is that possible? Well, the trick is, once again, that, uh, wow, this is bad. Mm -hmm. So, go back to the talk. Um, well, you already know what the possible options uh, are, then I'll go over uh, anamorphic images which is heavily related, and the trick to, to well, to, to deceive your eyes is this death misperception. Then I told you how to mix anamorphosis and nerves to, to, to find those impossible objects and well the tricks all the details on this anamorphic deformation of nerves there is a problem and with this deformation it, it changes the normals and then to match the artifacts i add some texture mapping to enhance this deception and finally um, you want to form a very complex model you have to resort to some sort of freeform deformation and uh, find some conclusions well um, those impossible uh, drawings that were introduced, in fact, by the Swedish artist, uh, his name was uh, Reutersberg, they were popularized by Escher, as you said, yeah, uh, this uh, famous uh, uh, Dutch designer, then by, by Penrose. Um, there was Lionel Penrose, was a psychiatrist, and then his son, the mathematician, and they uh, popularized those impossible watches in, in, in this, for instance, this uh, triangle, the, the, uh, it's called the impossible Penrose triangle. And the, the question, you wonder, well, are, are those just drawings? Can we build a 3D model of impossible figures, so a physical 3D model? And the answer is yes. So it's actually possible to, to manufacture one of those models. This is why Albert, who is um, a researcher in Technion in Israel, um, said that they should be called instead seemingly impossible because, in fact, you can manufacture them. And um, uh, the, the, there, there is a catch. The catch is that those objects, they look impossible only from a certain point, a very specific point. Point, which is called the, the vantage point. 
and um, for you can uh, try to design the animations. Um, have you ever heard of Suhi Harris Japan? Has made wonderful uh, animation. They have been awarded a prize. Uh, prize. So let me uh, this a video, a very short video. This is it. Uh, here. So this uh, this seems normal, but then those balls they go up the slope. This defies gravity. How is this possible? Because yeah, they they go uphill. How is this possible? So this is a trick. Yeah, this is a trick. So the balls they go down the slow path, they are deformed so that uh, your eyes are deceived. Hmm. Huh? So very nice. Very <laughs> and um, in fact, possible options are related uh, heavily to what's called anamorphic images. Anamorphic images is just something that is distorted and analyzes you once again from a certain point of. And um, there are many types of anamorphosis. This is an optical. That means that an optical device, no mirror, no lens are required. And this is a classical art technique that is used into paintings to give a 3D impression. It has been used uh, from the Renaissance by classical paint, uh, painters when they um, draw those frescoes of the vaults in, in churches. Um, in street paints there is a British artist whose uh, name is Julian Beavern and he, um, he draws with chalk on the sidewalks those nice uh, uh, pictures you see here. In fact, it can be, they, they can be used to slow down traffic you see those uh, fake potholes, and and the, it is road marks. It is a very nice example of those uh, anamorphic images. Um, if by some reason you want to replace a vertical traffic signal, this deal, a stop signal, etc., for whatever reason, what you do is just project the uh, desired uh, view onto the road. So you paint what's could say is an anamorphic version, the sibling as the projection of the original signal the road. And of course, the signal it appears distorted when it's observed by a pedestrian who is just above, but by this um, truck driver, it's okay. Mm -hmm. And in fact, you can use that technique um, for the opposite goal, instead of, of uh, achieving a two, um, 3D impression. Uh, if you have something that is uh, distorted, for instance, this logo on the surface, which is warped, then using this technique, what you can make up for the distortion, and um, so that the the uh, uh, when you are at the uh, this point, at the vantage point, using the logo as if it were a planner. So you can use other to give a 3D impression to the impression. Uh, it's, it's just a matter of projections. And well, wh wh what's going on? Um, everything boils down to that misperception. Um, let me show some more example. This one. So this is. Have you ever watched Brain Games? Yeah, this, uh, this episode, seeing is believing. So, once again, so what's what's going on? So what's going on here? You see this chair, and someone's <coughs> sitting here. <laughs> so what what's going on here?
So what, what's going on is death misperception. That means that um, the human eye is a two-dimensional device. And we have this binocular vision, stereo vision, but it, it gives us a very limited depth perception. And the brain is always trying to build a 3D model of the surrounding environment, drawing on past experiences, but sometimes it fails. Um, we have uh, this, uh, this video, this, this chair is called the uh, Boucher chair, this room where you see uh, a lady is big, there is small, and suddenly the, the ball grows, and how is that possible? Well, this is called, this is an um, um, optical illusion called the Amy's room, and the trick is that we are based on, on previous experiences, and the three model we're building in our brain is, is wrong, is wrong, it's not the right one. And sometimes um, just um, this blows up our mind, so it's impossible. We can't just uh, figure out what the 3D model is, because there we, we find some incoherence in, in the images. This is the case of those uh, impossible figures. Um, so death misperception is, is the key to impossible figures. Um, there are um, several types of the death misperception. Uh, one is what's called death interposition. Uh, this is the necker cube. You see this leg. This is in front uh, or is that behind. So you have some local information. You, you propagate this information. You get to some incoherence. So, uh, so this can be possible. Or um, if this is the case of the necker cube, and then you have that contradiction. There's the Penrose Triangle, or the, those Penrose stairs where, once again, you see this leg. This is uh, the right angle, right angle, but on different planes that can be possible. Yeah, or these, uh, the, these stairs. You have some structural inconsistency that it just confuses your brain, and you don't know what, what for a 3D model is, is really possible. And well, we'll here we'll um, we'll focus on on this the um, Penrose triangle. Basically, we have um, two ways to, to define those to to manufacture 3D models of those objects. Uh, one is just to and make this continuous 3D objects. So we, uh, we have some those bars and then we cut them. Um, this solution to the CPI, uh, the trick is that we have here a vertex, a vertex, they are on this, in 3D they are different, but the projection is the same. And they, if their projection is the same, we're based on past experiences, when two points they are the same or are retina, we think they are the same point in 3D. But in this case, they are. Yeah. And they look possible because our assumption is, is wrong. Okay. The, the edges do not coincide. Here we have an edge, an edge. They look the same, but they are right. <coughs> mm -hmm. And there is um, a second way to find those uh, impossible objects. And this is without sieves. Um, so we are using curved edges, curved faces. But those edges, they still project as a straight line segment. That means that we, are, we have no discontinuities. Um, but, but the point is that this, you see this edge, the red edge, it looks aligned. So this face looks like planner, it isn't, it, it, it's, it's really a, a curve, this phase is, is warp, but as the projection is aligned, your eyes are deceived, and then you think that this is just a, a conventional rectangle, but it isn't. And th this has, um, in art, this has uh, a key advantage over the previous solution, it's seamless, that means it's, it's more elegant, and is more robust 
because you have no dangling things over there. And um, above all, it's less sensitive to the displacement from this special point, because if you move away from the point, and with this, this model, you see a gap. Whereas here, okay, the edge is not straight, but the human eye is very good at spotting uh, those holes, gaps, but it's not as good if you want to say, is this line is a, a, a circle with a large radio, you don't know, you don't know. So this is, um, uh, we guess, the, the, the best way to, to manufacture those uh, 3D objects, and uh, this is related to nerves. So you have sculptured surfaces here, and how can we define those surfaces with nerves? Mm, so, the, the main two ideas of this presentation, one is that impossible objects, in fact, are, are, are related to uh, an anamorphic deformation to a sort of um, projection, but it's not the same for all the points but you, you move in radial direction all points so that they, they have the same projection, the point is moved having the same projection. So they, the points move along lines through the, the, the point node, is the vantage point, and we'll go over later. The, the <coughs> second fact is that this deformation uh, is, is trivial, it's very, very simple using this standard cat nerves model because the rational we split, um, you have some ratio and you can use this ratio, this portion for this radial deformation. But we go over the details uh, in, a, in a minute. So, uh, radial deformation is radial deformation. Um, the idea is that you, you have some object and then this, this point P and then you move away from the uh, point O where the observer is viewing the model and you draw a line and you move always from radial directions. And so that you do that for each point in the model and then from uh, for different distances and then you get the from model. This is the model S hat. <laughs> and the nice thing about this is that this is right tool for depth misperception because there is a basic property of this radial dilation, namely that the projection, if you project that, this point or this, onto any plane, any plane you fancy, is just the same. This is P, um, uh, this point is just the same. The, and as, as a result, um, that means that this, this initial object, the form object, they share the same silhouette, the projection of the edges, so they pretty much look uh, the same. Um, the normals change, and then that means the shading changes, and we'll have to fix that. Mm? With texture, well, we'll go over that. Um, but this is the main idea. You perform this radial deformation for each point of, of your model. Here I have some some horses, please put them around. <laughs> this. <laughs> and this is the uh, Stanford bunny. And the, uh, the idea is that they are the form. So this is the um, <coughs> bunny. And you see the, the, the head is uh, heavily the form. But if you look them uh, from the right point, the right direction, <coughs> they look normal. So they, if we have to produce a very slender hole. We have to do this, this hole look like this. <coughs> and if you see it through the hole, then you are in the right position, the right direction, and they just look normal. <laughs> yeah, they just look normal. Yeah, yeah, so you have to hold them at third, about 30 centimeters like this. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then your, your eyes are to see because we have very little, a little depth perception. Mm -hmm. I mean, just try with your fingers. 
if you try to, to touch your fingertips and, and first of all it seems simple but if you shut one of your eyes try to, to, to do that with your fingers mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with one eye shut and it's just impossible <laughs> so if you look at those bubbles with one eye you have to look at them with one eye so shut one of them it, it, they look like normal so uh, it was fun and well, now some, um, some mathematics, um, but please stay around, it's not that difficult. I'm sure that most of you have uh, heard of homogeneous coordinates. So what is this of homogeneous coordinates? Well, the idea is instead of uh, just 3D coordinates, X, Y, Z, we have the four-dimensional version is just adding a one, a, a fourth coordinate, and when we multiply, well, we wait, and um, uh, if, if all points have the same weight, uh, there are equivalent, um, we project by dividing by the last coordinate. I mean, it's just, it's just a mathematical trick for what? Well, here in, in this application, this is nice because we are putting this, um, this deformation, uh, dilation of the fourth coordinate. So we have a point, if we want to deform this point uh, on radial direction, the only thing we have to change is the last coordinate. So when we get the 3D point in Euclidean space, we have this delta, this inverse of the dilation factor. So basically, we put this dilation into our mathematical model in a very simple way. You stay with ratios, uh, it's boring, so it's much uh, more elegant adding a fourth coordinate, this is the inverse of the dilation. Huh? And this, this is heavily related to, to NURBS. Uh, um, I'm sure once again that you're familiarized with NURBS. NURBS uh, means uh, non-uniform rational V splines. Uh, Non-uniform means that it's <coughs> a piecewise model. Um, you have some parameter you with not. <coughs> that means that there the are the points where the different segments meet. Um, rate B spline means that <coughs> it's defined with B spline function. So you have control points. And here the, the, the important thing is this rational. Rational means that you have some weights. And the traditional form of uh, NURBS is just a polynomial spline is the points multiplied by the weights, divided by the weights, yeah, combined with the, um, the blended functions, the, the spline functions. But instead of ratios, uh, we'll uh, use those simpler, more elegant, homogeneous form in 4D where we just uh, have uh, four coordinates as a simpler. And if you want to write the code, this is, this is uh, once again uh, much simpler because, uh, in fact, in 4D, this is a polynomial spline, so there are no ratios. Then to get to 3D, you divide, that's it. Mm -hmm. So, why NURBS are, 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 are important? Well, because they, they are the, uh, the standard in, in CAD, uh, all surfaces. And when you're using uh, Rhino or SolidWorks, any CAD package, when you're designing surfaces, they are nurse, probably trim. Trim means that certain areas in the um, domain are flagged as um, invalid. So it means that, uh, for instance, you have this, this solid here, got a hole, is defined by this uh, trimming curve, and then the cylinder, this is trim with this curve. In turn, these trimming curves are two-dimensional nerves curve uh, defined over this domain. And if you define a solid, uh, solid works, CATIA, um, whatever a uh, CAT system, all the phases of uh, the solid is, are defined as trim nerves uh, patches. So this is why nerves are, are important. Uh, when you're using any CAT system, behind the scenes there are nerves everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. So, and, and not, not only for CAT and software, you're um, 
when you are using any video game, um, you have the, uh, the application pro interface, uh, Direct 3D, OpenGL, whatever, and they, um, they have implemented the rendering of nerves, it means that the hardware accelerated, they uh, tessellate them, uh, many uh, triangles, um, but they do that with microcode. So it's very, very um, uh, fast. And if you uh, use any uh, numerical or symbolic computation packages, either integrated the package or uh, so you have some, some tools, additional tools. So everybody uses NERVS. This is the software standard. You have to stick to it. And there's no other way to go. So how can you achieve those, uh, these uh, um, deformations with NERVS? It's very simple. Um, if you have um, a point and you want to deform that, you just change the last coordinate. So if you have, this is the initial point with the weight, uh, this is 3D, the weight, you just change the last coordinate, which is just is, uh, equivalent to um, changing the weight and moving the point. This is, it's, it's very simple, it's very simple. I mean, you see the equations are, just you divide, you know? and in, but in 4D, it's just changing the last coordinate. And if you do that for each control point of your curved surface, you get a radial deformation. You get a very rich radial deformation that is not the same in an area of the curve or the surface, and this is why um, you get those models and you can deform them in an interactive way. But it's very simple, you just change the last uh, homogeneous coordinate of the, the, each uh, control point, and you get this radial deformation. Um, the initial curve is polynomial, that makes the, the final curve is rational. And in fact, the definition of, of, um, of conics can be thought of as a radial deformation. So when you have a circle and you deform the control points of this initial circle here, in this anamorphic way, you get the different conical sections because all the points move through lines to the sponge, so they are on a cone, and as a consequence, you get conical uh, sections. So it is another way of uh, looking at conical sections, an anamorphic way. And the nice thing about this is that if you have an initial curve surface of a certain degree, the final degree is just the same. So it, this doesn't add any uh, complication, it doesn't complicate the model, it's just the same, but with different control points. And um, if you're using surfaces, um, those string surfaces is, mm, it's like for, for curves, you, you have a point, you move the point away, to get this radial deformation. If another nice thing is that, um, recall those trimming curves to find a, a pre-wrap solid. Uh, if you keep, if, if the initial uh, surface has the string curve, the final surface has just exactly the same trim curve. So you don't have to change anything. Yeah? Just move the control points, that's it, that's it. So it's, it's, it's really, Amazing. So, well, how can you use all this to get those war pins so that they are anamorphic? So, yeah, let's say the um, the faces here. This was the goal, like this example of uh, an impossible object. Well, if you have some straight edges, you just um, represent that as a linear uh, line with linear parameterization and a zero representation. And you have just two control points, but if you degree elevate that, you add some knots, then you get more points, and then you get more degrees of freedom. So the idea is that you start with a line, just two points, is there are not too many degrees of freedom. Um, you can, just with two points, as Suhihara, the Japanese artist, um, they're very simple surfaces. Uh, remember this, this video? Um, but if you want something more complicated like this, then you have to have more control points. But this is very, um, this is very simple. 
And if instead of a line, uh, an edge, you want a face, warp face, then is it, mathematically it's very simple. Um, you have a quadrilateral, this is a linear surfaces, uh, surface, then you degree elevate the surface and you get more control points here. So this is the initial surface with four control points. You degree elevate and you add some knots and then you have more points and then you have a lot of degrees of freedom to change the shape of, of your model. Uh, and once again, just you move away the control points, that's it. And th there, there's a problem. There, the problem is, as I told you, that um, this uh, radial dilation, it changes the normals. It, if you change the normals, it means that it changes the shading. You have some light in artifacts. And for you, uh, there's a video game. Uh, you can use any trick uh, in computer graphics, but here the goal is to, to manufacture uh, real 3D models. So how can we uh, to mask those artifacts? The solution is, is texturing the surfaces. Uh, so you have some texture uh, to the surface, and once again, uh, as in the case of those streaming curves, if you define the texture on the domain of the surface, it doesn't change when you carry out this deformation. So you see that you, the texture is just the same in the initial model, in the form model, and then you, that enhances the, the deception. Mm -hmm. So uh, the example of death uh, interposition, uh, you have these uh, three bars, this one, you see this and it's, it looks <coughs> impossible. Why? Because uh, it doesn't make any sense that the bar goes is in front, behind, in front, it doesn't make any sense. What's the trick to form this? And here's the animation. You see that it looks, uh, it can be, but it, of course it can, it's just bending from bar to bar. Yeah. And well, here's some texture. Um, the uh, Asher staircase with textures, this improves. So here you have some shading artifacts, but well, with the texture you don't know whether this, the, this is the <coughs> darker, the tiles. So I think it's quite helpful. And those are just um, uh, standard b -reptual. you can you can model them with any CAD system. Here another example of a uh, death contradiction where the, the texture is um, some, some text. Here is a sort of Penrose quadrilateral. Uh -huh. And uh, this is a, a different example because it's a non-orientable surface. Now, the previous examples are b rep solids. This is um, a sort of a Möbius strip. Uh, like surface, the Reno logo, and uh, it has some, yeah, this, this face here, face should be, no, so there's some contradiction here. And you have the texture that looks nice. And, but this is just a surface, not, not a solid. But it's defined with nerves, everything is here are on nerves. And, okay. Get to the last part of my talk is uh, a freeform deformation. Uh, those objects are, are simple, so they are mm, just uh, bars, <coughs> just twisted surfaces, but you have a very complex model such as those horses um, or the, um, the Stanford bunny. Then, if you have the control points of the defining surfaces and you move them by hand, one by one it's tedious. So you have to use something else. The right tool is the um, freeform deformation. I'm sure you've heard of a fellow that was introduced by Tom Cederberg uh, uh, from Brigham Young University in Utah some 30 years ago. And the, the idea is to 
place your model into a lattice, into a deformation pool with control points, and then you form the control points of this um, the 3D tool, and then the, the deformation is transmitted to the model inside your volume. Um, mathematically, it's just a change of coordinates plus um, uh, deformation. Yeah? So the, the only thing you have to do is it's just the same, the same equation, everything is the same, but instead of deforming directly your control points or the surface, then you deform the control points or a volume. Yeah? So when you have um, a point, what you get is a radial relation of this one, depending on the local coordinate, this U of, of the point, uh, with respect to the volume, and you have different uh, the formations depending on the location with respect to the volume and once again the user input is just the um, you move on those directions the um, the control points of the, of the line to the uh, deformation volume. Uh, here is a very s uh, a simple example uh, 2D example where uh, we're deforming something that is 2D and um, we use as a deformation tool, uh, a very simple Bezier tool. In case of the degree one, this is just a triangle. Um, and then you have this initial control points. You move those three control points, you get a plane. This is a projection. So in a very simple case, you get the traditional projection. Yeah? And if you, you draw some the outline of uh, a type, then everything on this plane, uh, if it's a nerves, it remains a nerve, same degree, so nothing changes. And this is what is used on those uh, road marks. It's just a projection. So in this case, this tool, and there's for, in the simplest case, linear, is traditional projection. This anamorphic deformation. You can uh, add some complication. Instead of uh, three control points, you, the, you are using a deformation tool, you have more control points. Um, this is the quadratic case. And this is, this is awesome because you get the inverse of the stereographic projection. So um, the uh, stereographic projection is used. To, to project from Earth to a map. And what you, you do is you choose the, um, a point on the, on the sphere, and then you project using this, this point as a center point on a plane. Well, this is just the opposite. Uh, the opposite uh, transformation. So here you have the control points. Instead of three, this is um, quadratic. You have more control points. You form all those control points, and what you get is a surface, which is a quadrant. So this is a generalized through graphic protection, not just spheres, but any quadrant. And um, the inverse is the traditional uh, stereographic projection. So with this NURBS model, we get, in simpler cases, what we already know hmm, from. Uh, uh, conventional geometry. Um, we are still on, on the 2D case where we are just forming something on a plane with control points. Mm, if you have this bilinear case, well, you have a work quadrilateral. Uh, here we have the texture. Uh, this is this image, and as you can see, well, it, it doesn't <coughs> change. So you have the point, the point, you move them away. Uh, regardless where they, they are placed, the final <coughs> outcome is always the same. The projection is always the same. Um, the, the, uh, the, um, the tool we want is a 3D tool where we have some volume with control points to perform very complex models, <coughs> funny courses. So instead of, of um, something on a plane, we use a true three-dimensional control lattice of control points. Um, we can have just uh, a tetrahedron. This is the simplest linear case. And 
if we um, embed our model in this tetrahedron, we move away from the, the point, the center point, the, this control point, we deform um, our model. And this is an example, this is the teapot, uh, where we want to deform, this is the, uh, the Utah teapot, the celebrated Utah teapot. <laughs> And to, to get this, uh, this effect, we uh, put this uh, tetrahedron. We move away just one control point so that this remain fixed and there are no gaps. So, uh, of course, we the form just with, which is within this, this tetrahedron, which uh, mathematically is, is very simple, it's just um, um, the points with this local coordinate that are bicenter coordinate. Those positive are moved away. Um, the space remains the same so that there are no discontinuities. And this is the final result. So you get this spout here, this elongated. So uh, when you see the teapot from the, this bat, um, the, uh, the vantage point, you don't see any difference at all. Um, this is the force those horses, those models. Uh, here we've used this um, deformation tool, this cube, and we uh, move away just those four control points, the, those uh, four points on the space, they remain the same. Once the gate to avoid discontinuities, and you see that the uh, result here. So, these, these are uh, actual pictures of, of the horses. This is the initial model. This uh, are the, um, the form models. So you see here the difference, but they are not uh, seen from, from the, uh, the right point. But when you see them from the right point, they look just the same. So there, there's no trick here. This is a picture with camera, picture with camera, it looks the same, exactly the same. So, some conclusions. Um, these uh, impossible figures can be modeled very easily with this anamorphic deformation that is very simple mathematically with NURBS. Uh, this optical anamorphism is the key technique. Um, you have to use those homogeneous coordinates that makes everything very simple. And uh, the, I guess the main contribution of this work is that all this allows a direct implementation into nurse based CAD system. So as for, as everything is very simple. You just take the control point, you move away, and the, the weight changes in a very simple way. And if, if, if the model is simple, you move each point individually, but when the model gets very complex with many uh, uh, triangles or many, um, many patches, then you have to find a better way to do that. This is a freeform deformation. So everything you do with patches, with curves, can be done with <coughs> um, freeform deformation. <coughs> and just um, <coughs> the final remark is that <coughs> this application vindicates the rational character of the NURBS model. Um, when it was uh, introduced in the uh, late uh, 70s, early 80s, it was not clear whether this rational uh, could be, this rational character could be useful. And this is an example where it is really important, the rational, uh, the rational feature of this uh, NURBS model. Because otherwise, uh, I mean, it's, it's just impossible. It's very simple with the traditional polynomial model. It would be a nightmare. And finally, some acknowledgments. Uh, there's been a joint work with uh, Jesus Miguel Chicano, a colleague of mine. Uh, this work has been supported by um, the uh, Spanish Ministry of Economy as financial blah, blah, European community. So you are from Europe, thank you. <laughs> and well, thanks to Jose Pablo, he's, he's the head of the research office and he's provided some support for us.
this work. So thank you very much for coming after uh, Mr. Diener. Some, most of you were sleeping, but thank you very much for coming. <laughs> Try your water. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you very much, Javier. I think we are on time to make some general question or motivation, please. Thank you for your presentation. Um, I'm in car design, and this is very much related to the problem that, that you are looking at a certain perspective. You change right. something. Yeah. It looks really the way you want it. Yeah. You, you rotate the mold a little bit, and then and it falls apart. Right. So there's something there. I'm I'm sort of wondering how would this knowledge be able to address that problem? Would that, how might that help the design process use the first In the sign of 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 traditional objects, or uh, in the sign of those impossible objects, or so well, you're constantly playing with the viewpoint. Yeah, yeah. Which is what you do with design. In a certain viewpoint, it's not going to lose the way you want. As yeah. soon as you start rotating, it's no longer the effect that you're going. Yeah. So I'm sort of reversing what you do. How is there something in there that might be of benefit to that, that knowledge? How could that be applied to? Um, well, yeah, that's no question. Uh, in fact, I published 20 years ago um, a paper uh, in the uh, uh, IEEE uh, computer graphical application on how to use this deformation tool in a general setting. So um, when, when you have your, your CAD program, you either move the control points or the weight, or change the weight. And if you combine that, you have this, you can um, uh, achieve any uh, deformation that is not just moving a control point or changing a weight. Because just changing a weight, the rate of duration is always centered uh, at the control point. Here, with this deformation tool, the, you can set this point anywhere, anywhere. So this could be used as a general tool for design uh, instead of just control point weights, it's a combination. So, but I, I published that some, some years ago. In fact, the, uh, all this idea is based on, on this tool. Uh, I don't know whether it was the question, but... Um, Sorry, I, I actually don't know how to move control points. I know that's how it works, that's what I have yeah. to constantly. But you move control point and you look at what happens with the projected line lines on the surface. Basically, what you really want is to see Move the light lines directly. Oh, a lot, yeah. Uh, no. um, yeah, there are some words in the high, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Uh, so to, you try to edit directly the uh, parties that this was uh, much harder because they, they are given by differential equations. And, but there are many works on this. There are some works on I know it's difficult. Because it, it's, I it's, yeah, uh, in fact, I never thought of the, whether you could use this tool. I didn't know. I didn't know. Real, time, about real time design. Real, yeah, but, but there, there are, some, there are some, some papers, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And I don't know where the alias, yeah, it's the, the. I watched a video where they, was, they were using some tool in the um, car industry, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I don't know what happened to, to this tool. Okay, thank you. Any other question on the room? Okay, I think, I think we are out of time. Uh, yes, I think something, it will be very specific. Have you uh, studied the, the topology behind this particular object? For instance, if you want to uh, map them into a uh, single manifold or a two manifold topology or a, a, a higher order topology, does this topological information tell something about the, uh, if you can model it with the, uh, with spine because it is somehow for me about continuity, right? And then the connected connectedness in the topological space 
gives information about the continuity in the geometric space. So when you, you ask that, okay, how to deform the spine and how to make that particular shape, which is, uh, how to say, most economically connects the two forms you mentioned, the bars. Uh, yeah. So uh, do you rely on any sort of topological information in, well, in, in making decisions on what to, uh, how to m m apply the spine or um, In fact, here we, we generalize this problem because when we're, you, you find a B-rep uh, solid, you, all the topologies within the rep, B-rep model. Exactly. It, so so, it, so it, those it, streaming curves, they have to, to match. So if you have here, if you have a B-rep model and you use this tool, you don't have to change anything about the, uh, well, unless you have self-intersection, unless you have self-intersection, yeah. but you have a B-rep model and you use this tool, you don't have to change anything about the, 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 the topology if the deformation is mild. Because if you have self, exactly. the, the, if you have, my point. If yeah, the deformation is mild, is mild. Right. but uh, then if how you decide on if you you have to use one single nerve surface for creating the connection, or for instance, decompose it into a multi-phase B-rep model and uh, generate the the uh, surface patches individually, because yeah. this is a much more yeah, yeah. it might so, be the the, the a, a important issue here, you know, yeah. for so, rationalization of the whole. Process. So it is very simple. You deform each surface, yeah. and it works. But it's very common, it doesn't work. So you yeah, have to sure. resort to this uh, freeform yeah. deformation and. The free form deformation is more complicated because it increases the degree. So, uh, yeah, the, the, you're right. So, how to use one tool, just the, the surfaces, or uh, is not clear. It isn't clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It isn't clear. Yeah, yeah. So, for simple things, yeah. Sure. But, but yeah, is yeah. it very common? No, no. It, it's compli it, it gets complex. Absolutely. Yeah, you're right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Kay. How are you? Thanks so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you.